Our entrance hymn is number 910. Come, Christians, join to sing. 910. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us together call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Almighty ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. A second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Life is a ransom for many. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left, that is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord of Jesus Christ. Just a little disclaimer. I am now going into 60 plus hours without any caffeine at all. So trying to go back off of it once again. Somebody asked me, they said, Father, I hope your uh, headache doesn't last too long. And my response is, my headache goes back to Delaware on Wednesday. <laughs> See, I'm still with it. A little tired, but I'm still with it. <laughs> my old Irish humor. Our second reading is taken from the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, we focus on the priesthood of Jesus Christ. As we listen to the reading, we are reminded that we have a great high priest in our Lord and Savior. What makes Jesus so great? And you're all looking at me like, what? What makes Jesus so great? Of course, he is God. But we are reminded by the author of the letter as it is written. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. This is why we profess and sing, our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above. That's why we sing our God is an awesome God, because he can relate with each of us, because he became like us in all things, all things but sin. He learned like us, he lived among us, and he embraced the cross for us. As we hear in the first reading, it really foretells what the Son of Man must do. It says, if he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. The readings today really make us think, not just of the sacrifice that our Lord made, but also the sacrifices of the martyrs throughout history. From that one moment in history on the cross when Jesus died, and the repeated moments of history when the followers of Christ lay down their lives for the faith, the church from their sacrifices experience new life. What inspires 
someone to be a follower of Christ. Let's think about what inspires people to become teachers or what inspires people to become first responders. Here is the simple answer. Their true dedication and their sacrifice. For a teacher to make a positive impact on their students' lives and help them succeed, that is special. To see your students succeed. When we see someone put themselves in harm's way, running into a burning building to save lives, that is inspiring. We could use many words to describe these individuals, but there is one word that sticks out in my mind, and it should in all of our minds, and that is the word hero. Generations of young people have looked up to fictional characters such as Batman, Captain America, Superman, Wonder Woman, to name a few. But for us as Christians, we have real live superheroes, which include, of course, our Lord Jesus and the lives of all the saints. True heroes are willing to let go of themselves for the sake of others. Listening to today's gospel from Mark, we have the sons of Zebedee, James and John, who approach Jesus and say, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. This wasn't a question, but rather a statement. They were filled at that moment, selfish ambition. What is in it for me? I think that this happens to all of us occasionally where this idea creeps into our mind. After James and John tell Jesus what they want, he asks them, can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? As much as that question was directed at the sons of Zebedee today, it is also meant for us. Can we drink from the cup? And we're not talking about a cup of water. We can all drink that, but the cup. We are followers of Jesus Christ. And as Christians, we are called to be courageous. We are called to be martyrs willing to sacrifice our lives for others. Let's be clear, while we use the term martyrs for anyone who sacrificed their physical lives, we can also apply it to those who put aside their desires, needs, and wants to lift others up. Are we doing that? Are we living up to our call of duty as followers of Christ? Spouses, are you laying down your lives for each other? Those who are parents, are you laying down your lives for your children? Be heroes for each other. Anyone who stops during the day to pray for someone in need is a hero. Those who practice their faith by going to confession and come to church regularly on Sunday and holy days of obligation to be encouraged, nourished, and strengthened, they are heroes. We may not think of it, but why do we pray? For strength so that we can help others. That's a heroic act. Today, we are challenged to follow the example of Jesus in order to become saints. Listen to the words of Jesus. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, can we do that? That's the cup. Can we accept the cross? 
Can we accept the call to lay down our lives for one another? That is the cup. Can we do that? For those who can, they are on the way. They are on the path to sainthood. Even though we're not perfect, Jesus gives us the tools necessary to utilize to get there. He gives us his own body and blood. When we're ill, he gives us the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. When we're struggling with sin, we have the sacrament of reconciliation. These tremendous gifts that God has given us to help us on our journey. Never be afraid to approach Jesus. Never be afraid to approach him. I know it can be challenging, but don't ever hesitate because he's given us the tools for this reason. Never be afraid, but trust the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength. And I know people do get intimidated in confession. I know people are afraid to go to confession because they're afraid of their own struggles because they believe what the devil tells them you're no good. He calls us by our sins. I know people are afraid of confession because sometimes we, my brother priests over the years, have failed that sacrament. You know, sacrament of confession is really the sacrament of mercy. You know, I might get excited up here at the pulpit and become a lion, but back there, I'm a lamb. Don't be afraid to go. Because guess what? All the older generation of priests, the yellers, they're six feet under. They're in their eternal reward. It is the sacrament of love. It is the sacrament of mercy. Go. Because if we can embrace it, my dear brothers and sisters, for those who can, we're on the way to becoming a real life superhero. We're on our way, on the path towards sainthood. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward as to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is the supreme high priest interceding for us. He understands our weakness, for he is also the suffering servant, taking our faults on himself. His work and example inspire us to pray with humble devotion. For our Holy Father, the pastor and teacher of God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a recovery of the values of duty, integrity, and service among government workers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who work in restaurants, hotels, and the entertainment industry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For gratitude to our Eucharistic Lord, who gives his life up as a ransom for many, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with illness impacting them emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually, that they may find comfort healing, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those visiting our parish family this weekend and for their intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our nation here at home and around the world and for our first responders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of the holy sacrifice of the Mass being offered for Lillian Miller, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. We bring our hopes and desires before you in union with the atoning work of your Son, the eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 966. Make us true servants. 966.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To the love of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sin we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse of the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For the kingdom of God. Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, thank you. Peace be with you, thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn is number 899. The body of Christ. You are near. 899. The body of Christ. 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 Bless your Father's Spirit, amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christ. You know my heart and its words. The body of Christ. You have warned me before I was born. The body of Christ. To the secret of darkness before I saw the Would you like to receive? No, okay. All right. In my mother's
60 in each, please. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by which you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Our announcements for the weekend are as follows. The takeout turkey dinner is tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. In addition to the dinner, the thrift shop is also open with everything half price. The link for the Disciple Maker Index is in this weekend's bulletin. And also, please don't forget to submit the names of family members who have died within the past year if you would like them added to the Mass of Remembrance for the 10.30 a.m. Mass on Sunday, November 3rd. Finally, and this is important for next weekend only for Saturday evening. Because of the Harvest Day festivities and the parade here in New Oxford, on Saturday, October 26th, there will be no confessions. Mass will be pushed back to 5 p.m. If you come at the normal time, or you actually find a spot at the normal time, and you get into the church, you have an extra half hour with Jesus and consider that such a tremendous gift. But just a reminder, next week Mass will begin at 5 p.m. Because the parade comes out here on Oxford Avenue right in front of the church and it affects and impacts both of our parking lots, we just have no other choice but to delay the Mass for next weekend. So I thank you for making the adjustment. And again, like I said, if you forget, you get extra time with Jesus. And besides that, I'll be out watching the parade. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl out the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 932. Go be justice. 932. Go be justice.
justice to God's people. Teach a hardened heart to learn. Break the bread.